<laughs> so last time we finished off on we we're looking at Revelation 13 where we see um, the second <coughs> mention of the beast the first one we is that we see the beast coming out of the bottomless pit and then we see the beast again and he's coming out of the sea this time and we know he's got seven heads and ten horns and that will come up soon about the ten horns being ten kings so this is quite symbolic um, we also know the beast is the number of a man so there will be a person sort of related to this as well. And we know that he it's a satanic power because the dragon, who was revealed previously to be Satan, gives his power to this, this beast and gives him a throne and gives him great authority. Um, he is given permission to overcome the saints. So he will overcome um, the people left behind and he will overcome the saints specifically. This is all now centered around Jerusalem and the Middle East. So he will overcome the you know the Messianic Jews in Israel. And he will his government will be over every tribe, every tongue, every nation. So it talks about people going into captivity and being being um, killed, being executed. And then we see another beast. So this is the second beast and he looks like a lamb but speaks like the devil. So this is what who's known as the false prophet. And he's going to do amazing signs and wonders, very, very deceptive, miraculous signs and wonders that's talked about in Thessalonians, that uh, they're so conceit, uh, so believable that if it were possible, they would even deceive the elect. But the elect won't be deceived, but only because of God, essentially, not because of any wisdom of their own, just because God won't let them. He will show them the truth. And then it talks about the mark of the beast and that everybody who will not take the mark will be killed. So that tells us that obviously... Um, the rapture, the rescue of the church has to happen before then because the scriptures clearly say that people will be alive when they see the Lord. There will be people, Christians alive, faithfully waiting for Jesus who will see him come. Um, and that can't be possible if we've, if we've all been killed for our faith. If everybody's been martyred because they won't take the mark, the whole world would have to take the mark and those who don't will be killed because the only other option is, is bow the knee, Worship the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, essentially, or be thrown into the into the fiery furnace. Um, in this case, again, worship Satan, take the mark, or be killed. So he makes everybody, the whole world, small, great, rich, poor, sleep, slave, free, no exceptions. Everybody has to take this, and we know that that is six hundred and sixty-six. So you either have to have that number, or his name, or the mark of his name. So. Revelation 14, then I looked, so we know that this happens after that. Now the Lamb is standing on Mount Zion. So this is interesting, needs some study. So is this talking at this point about Mount Zion in Jerusalem on earth? Is this talking about heaven? So we've got to look very carefully. So Lamb is standing on Mount Zion and with him is the, the 144,000 that we saw in Revelation chapter eight or nine, um, when we saw the 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the male Jews that were sealed, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, adding up to 144. So that's those guys again. Um, so they haven't been to heaven. So they're standing on Mount Zion and he's got his 144,000 and they had their, his father's name written on their foreheads, okay? <laughs> I, I heard a sound from heaven. Okay, so that's happening in heaven. Like the sound of many waters and like the sound of a great thunder. So that's typically a voice. I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. And they're singing a new song now. So this is a special new hymn that is sung only by the 144,000. So they sang a new song before the throne. And before the four living creatures, remember those from earlier, the worship in heaven, and the 24 elders who sat around the thrones, so they're in heaven. No one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are those who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are those who follow the Lamb wherever he goes, and they were redeemed from among men, as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. No lie was found in the mouse, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So I think this whole thing, by the sounds of it, I think the 144,000 by this point have been 
um, slain. So that you remember they were sealed from um, the the wrath and the play like not the plagues the plagues haven't happened yet but they were sealed from um, yeah yeah the plagues happened right what were the trumpets the trumpets events I get mixed up with the wrath and the plague sometimes it depends on the translation what word they use so the seven bowls of God wrath hasn't happened yet they come after this but the seven trumpets have which was terrible terrible things and the persecution the the war of the beast to overcome the saints has happened. So after this, I believe this whole scene, because verses 2, 3, 4, 5, all of this, 6, they're all in heaven. So I think now, I think Jesus is still in heaven at this point, because he comes down in chapter 21 after the marriage feast, okay? And then rules for a thousand years. So I think this is a vision in heaven still. I think the 144,000 have been martyred, they've died for their faith, and they're now glorified in heaven stood with Jesus on the true Mount Zion because everything's a shadow of the heavenly the temple is just a shadow of the real one in heaven the mercy seat the throne everything is just a, a symbol for what it really is so the real Mount Zion I think it says that in Hebrews actually as well I should double check that the true Mount Zion and the true kingdom and the true city is the one in heaven and even the real Jerusalem later on comes down from heaven so there's like another Jerusalem in heaven the real one that comes down onto earth and we'll see that soon. So I believe this Mount Zion is the real Mount Zion in the real Jerusalem, which is in heaven. It would make a lot more sense in terms of the sequence of things. So they're with Jesus now. They've, they've died and they're in heaven. And that's why you've got, because they have to be there really, because it says that nobody can learn it. This song that's happening, look, uh, in verse three, the song in heaven is being taught to the 144,000. That's happening in heaven. So they're being taught it. Um, and we hit, we see here that they are male virgins. They've they've never been with women, a uh, woman, and they're with with the lamb, and they've been redeemed to God. So I think these guys have been faithful unto death. They were, I believe, a special evangelism ministry during the tribulation time that have died and are now in heaven. And we're back in heaven still. Then at verse six, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the eternal gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. Can I borrow that? Yeah. Right. Ah. Having the eternal gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and every tribe and tongue and people. So remember Jesus said that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the earth and then the end will come. So this is like that. Um Obviously, there's you know that's been happening for thousand two thousand years now. There's been missionary missions going into jungles and and the Bible translated in many languages. But there's still big areas of the country and the world, um, not the country, sorry, big areas of the world and almost whole countries that are still very much unevangelized to. Uh, most of India have never never heard the gospel. Um, so this will sort that out. You know, we can have angels flying overhead and preaching the gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Okay, so the wrath begins from here on, the proper bowls of wrath. That's why it's about God's judgment. Another angel followed, saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon, that great city. Because she has made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her sexual immorality. So we get a, I think it's possibly in the next chapter, the chapter after, we get a zoom in essentially of verse 8. We get detail about Babylon and why it's fallen and who's done it and what happens and ideas about who it is. I believe um, from looking at that chapter, which we'll go through in a minute, I believe Mystery Babylon is is now um, America, just the, the United States, mainly because of, um, it talks about the vast export of sexual morality that all the nations in the world have got drunk off, and the nation that exports sexual immorality in the form of pornography yeah, is, is America. They make it all, and they sell it around the world. The other thing is um, their pharmacia, their drugs. Big Pharma, the home of that is America. All the ads about you know the whole thing of like drugs for everything and pills it's all being made there and that whole like pharmaceutical mindset 
again comes from America. Uh, and there's something else as well, which we'll get to, which I've forgotten. There's a third thing um, about the States, about their sort of exports. Um, oh, about all the merchants of the world getting rich off it. And the whole international, the whole worldwide economy, um, the international stock market is based on the dollar. The dollar underpins yeah, the whole international yeah. stock market. So if the dollar goes, everything goes. Um, and the whole world, it says, mourns over the fall of America, which would happen if America went under whole world stock market just fall into into calamity um, and everybody would lose so that and it talks about you can see when you look into it they've been nuked in a in a sudden destruction it says in an hour they've been overthrown in fire and all been burned up and it, it paints a picture of just a cataclysmic nuclear armageddon um when we read it and that all the ships are sat in the water looking at this and you can just see the burning and the smoke and they're all like whoa what's happened so we'll see that in a minute, but that's that's what I believe. Um, so the angel is now saying, right, Babylon the Great has fallen. Why? Because she's made all the nations drink of her sexual immorality, the wrath of her sexual immorality. She's caused sin all around the world. Now a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out in full strength into the cup of his anger. Elsewhere uh, in Revelation, it says again that if anybody takes the mark, they go in the lake of fire and they don't have eternal life, etc. So something that is is a is a one way street. It's a, it's a no uh, there's no repentance of it. Um, it's a really serious thing. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's talking about people being burned in the lake of fire, which we'll see later on. Um, yeah, not, not a pleasant thing at all. Something to be feared. The smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever. They have no rest night or day. Those who worship the beast and his image whoever receives the mark of his name so yeah it doesn't it doesn't sound good i don't know what um yeah they, they you see what happens soon basically in the next in the wrath on the people this is why this is like at this point um everything that goes on from here is is the wrath of god poured out on the wicked world and there's no there's no um, good people left. There's no Christians left. There's no church left. I don't even think there are any faithful Jews left. What follows here on, it says about they've got no rest night or day. You'll see in the bowls of wrath, it's just God's absolute rage against this world who just won't repent. And all the people who've got the mark getting sores and getting punished and getting killed and all these things. If you think the trumpets and the seals are bad, there's nothing compared to what comes after this. Um, it's pure wrath, and God would not be pouring out that pure wrath on anybody who was that, his children, you know. So I don't believe at this point there's anyone left. I think the church has been taken. I think the 144,000 have been taken. There's nothing left but wicked people who hate God um, and the beast and his kingdom and all of his stuff and he's doing. So this is just, this is the flood sort of time where God's just right, I'm going to just punish these people. So here is the patience of the saints, and here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Um, I think that is meaning heed these warnings, essentially. If you take the mark, look what happens. Look what's going to happen to these people. They're going to have no rest night or day, but they're going to be punished. This is the patience of the saints. Keep the commandments of God and keep the faith of Jesus so you don't get this fate. Um, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labours for their works follow them. So that gives me a bit of hope that hopefully people in this process, some, I don't know, perhaps are repenting or... I don't get how it works. It says that if anyone's taking the mark, they're kind of, they're done. Um, I don't understand how there are people who are alive at this point who haven't, unless it's talking about like 
remote tribes people and people in countries where the beast kingdom didn't get to because they're like islands or something but I don't know we'll see keep that in mind that verse blessed are the dead who die in the Lord now and see if there's any mention after this of of you know faithful people being martyred but yeah currently at this point this is a view in heaven so we lost that simple linearity of the timeline remember how it was one two three four five six seals seven seals and then the seven seals was one two three four five six seven trumpets then when you get to seven trumpet you got all this interlude stuff where it's like heaven views in the stars um like different snapshots and then you're back in heaven again with angels saying things it's like it's hard to relate this stuff where it sits sometimes um it takes a lot of study but yeah remember these points and then we can hook them in as we go into the back into the linear timeline again with the seven bowls so the harvest of the earth and I looked and there was a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like a son of man he's got a gold crown on his head and in his hand he has a sharp sickle then another angel came out of his temple out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him who sat uh, let me just check out if it's still on yet crying out with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud and said, thrust in your sickle and reap. The time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. And yet another angel who had authority over fire came out of the altar and he cried out with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle saying, thrust in your sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So, how many angels have we got here in this message? So, we got so one angel preaching the gospel. So that's one. Second angel saying Babylon's now going to be destroyed. Third angel warning about the mark of the beast. And then just a voice saying, blessed are those who die from now on. Another angel coming and crying out to reap the harvest. Another angel, which I believe is five now, coming out of the temple with, another, with a sharp sickle as well. And then a sixth angel who has authority over fire. And he's crying out to the previous one who's got the sickle and saying, thrust in your sickle deep and gather the clusters of the vine. So these are the um, these are the ones for the wrath, basically. So this is a bit like the separation of good fish, the bad fish, the wheat, the weed, for the fire, etc. So the grapes get thrown into wrath and get stamped on and turned into blood. And the previous one is the wheat. It's the good, it's the good harvest. So I don't know if these line up with the seals or something. Maybe there's a clue with that. Um, yeah, this sort of stuff is, is tricky to place with the timeline. So, thrust in your sickle, gather the clusters for her grapes are ripe. The angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vintage of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The winepress was trampled outside the city and the blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridles for 186 miles. So, yeah, when Jesus comes, it's a bloodbath. We're talking almost a 200 mile in every direction up to the horse's bridles bloodbath. Um, yeah, certainly, certainly serious and certainly wrath. So, yeah. These things are very, these things are symbolic. Obviously, there's not. it's not talking about literal grapes. It's talking about people. It's not talking about literal uh, wheat or anything like that. Literal like, reaping of wheat. It's angels gathering people and punishing other people. Um, I don't know, really. In that case, it's probably not a literal, it's not going to be a literal wine press. Um, but it's talking about this great punishment and bloodshed. Um, so it's probably not actually a giant wine press with people getting crushed in and blood pouring out, but it's all these things is following the the imagery of the 
parabolic imagery <clears throat> that's been given about this the grapes. So yeah, these things have a lot of similarities with other events. So now this is where we get back um, in verse six, back onto the last, these are the bowls of God's wrath, the last seven. Uh, and they follow on from the, all this stuff is still within the seventh trumpet. So I saw another great and marvelous sign in heaven. There's now seven angels and they've got the seven last plagues. For in them, the wrath of God is complete. So this is the end now. This is the end of the wrath. And this is the real, the real thing. One sec, let me just pause the recording. Okay, seven angels with the seven last plagues. For in them, the wrath of God is complete. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire. Okay, so, and those who have the victory over the beast. So that sea of glass is the, it's that crystal sea that the throne of God sits upon. Um, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. So these people are all with the Lord now, they're all in heaven. And they stood on that sea of crystal glass that the throne of God is on. And they've got harps and they're, they're praising God. And they sang the song of Moses. They're worshipping God. And the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvellous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord? Glorify your name, for you alone are holy. And all nations shall come and worship before you. Your judgments have been revealed. There's a lot in Revelation about worships. It's a really good place to copy and paste all of the worships and, and hymns and things from Revelation. Put them all together and you've got a great idea of what our worship could look like. So verse 5, after this, so we're back so you can see that clear linearity of, linearity of timeline. After this, I looked. And now the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. So this is the real temple of which the earthly temple is a symbol. The seven angels came out of the temple with the seven last plagues. They were clothed in pure bright linen and they've got their chests wrapped with golden sashes. Then one of the four living creatures, remember them, these are the four faced um, seraphim that are around the throne of God who worship him. One of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God. This is why I call, why I call it the, the seven bowls. The wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. No one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. So you can see at this point there's some real action happening up in heaven. So chapter 16, there's seven bowls of God's wrath. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go, pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So this is proper wrath now. This is certainly what we are absolutely not to be. Um, so what we're escaping from, this is what it's all about. We are not appointed to the wrath. Scripture tells us many times. So the first angel goes. He pours out his bowl on the earth and foul and grievous sores came on the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Okay, So these people are being punished now. These are the people that have no rest night and day um, in their life. And then when they die or when Jesus comes, they're going to be taken, thrown in the lake of fire and they're going to be tormented and burned up and burned to smoke. So. Yeah, and we'll look when we go through this now, look out for anything about saints or believers and see if there's anything one still alive at this point. Otherwise, I need to take a very close look at and pray about Revelation 14 and see if those events have any, if they link to other seals or trumpets and see if, because then if that's the case, they can give us more information about those. Um, So the second, uh, sorry, the second bowl, 
first bowl is um, torment of the people who've taken the mark and they get swords. The second bowl now is poured on the sea and the whole sea now becomes like a dead man and every living creature in the sea died. So remember in the seals, the, the seven seals, a third of the sea turned to blood and a third of the living creatures died in the sea. This is now the, you know, the conclusion of that. The whole sea is like blood now. So that toxic phytoplankton catastrophe we've been talking about with all the abuse and overfishing that's going on and we're starting to get these blood tides and loads of fish dying. This has reached its full conclusion now. There's nothing. I don't know. Like, this is really, this is the end of the world. If the sea dies, we die because it produces all the oxygen. There's no fish. All the whales, all the dolphins, all the incredible diversity of life is gone. Um, everything in the sea is dead. So again, I don't know how Potter has spin that one because I think we might have noticed if every living creature in the sea had died and the sea turned to blood. This has obviously never ever happened before and will never happen again. This is once in a once in the creation of the world time. And after this, God has to recreate the heaven and earth. Third angel pours his bowl, the third bowl, on the rivers and springs of waters, and they became they become blood. There's no water to drink anymore. Like, it's all become poisonous and become blood. Remember in earlier in the uh, trumpets, wormwood happened and an angel struck the springs and rivers and they became wormwood and became poisonous and bitter. So that was bad enough. Now they've turned to blood. It's even worse. Then I heard the angel of the water saying, you are righteous, O Lord, who is and was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. So see how this is like Egypt when the rivers and the waters were turned into blood. The same curses. We get the others in a minute, hail and death, etc. And why are they doing these things? Like why is God doing this to these people? Because they have, in verse 6, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and you have given them blood to drink because it is what they deserve. So there's been a great deal of martyring of God's people and murder of God's people and persecution prior to this and now God is pouring out his punishment upon the earth. And I heard another uh, from another from the altar saying, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Now we've got the fourth angel on the fourth bowl. He's pouring out his bowl on the sun. And power was given to the sun to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. Yet they did not repent and give him glory. So we can see possibly a solar flare there or just global warming, climate change reaching, reaching its maximum effect, great, great, great heat, drought, people you know, collapsing from the heat, burning. It's just this immense, the sun just gets super hot. Um, yeah, so and we can kind of, we're starting to see the beginnings of that. The whole world's getting hotter and hotter. We're having longer, drier summers. There's great drought all around the world, especially in the Middle East. You know, we've got millions of people um, starving and there's famine everywhere and uh, wildfires like crazy in places like Australia and other places because we're having such drought and heat so this has already started and this is when it reaches its peak so and these people as you can see they know it's God they're blaspheming him they're blaming God they've probably seen miraculous things by now and there won't be many people like in Egypt I don't think anyone was unbelieving they were seeing like these miraculous things, and they themselves were, were you know, were um, religious people. They believed in gods. They just hated El Shaddai, Yahweh Elohim. They hated the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac of the Bible. They would not repent, and they would not give Him glory. So the fifth bowl, the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne, and he pours out his throne on the beast, look, on his kingdoms. This is what again it's still about. This is like the punishment of Egypt in a way. Um, and it's the same thing, darkness. Darkness was another one of the plagues against um, Egypt. The sun was darkened and they had an eclipse and everything like that. Yes, Rene? Um, in heaven, maybe not. It's, this is something happening in heaven. Like, Angel. Like in heaven and then there's a, a physical manifestation of that so i don't know if we'd actually see anything but if an angel in heaven is doing this then that's on the earth 
what that's happening darkness the sun's getting hot sea turns to blood do you know what i mean there might be um is like the power of god yeah that his wrath basically it's a plague coming out um similar with like when moses just he just lifted the rod and then the seas just turned to blood in heaven something like this could have happened do you know what i mean an angel was doing it or whatever um but there will be there'll be some thing on earth happening you know the you know, scientists would say oh chemicals have happened or is an eclipse or like it's a solar flare or something like that but the one behind it is the creator who made all these things you know they don't they're not going to say oh an angel did it um both things are true but the the ultimate um what's the, what's the word for the person behind it the person doing it is is god yeah that sort of thing yeah the actor behind it so the beast's kingdom and that's what all this punishment is about because of what the world his kingdom gets filled with darkness and they're gnawing their tongue because of the anguish and they blasphemed god of heaven because of their pains and their sores and they did not repent of their deeds so they've got sores there the sun's burning them the water's all blood there's darkness now and they will still not repent just blaspheming the Lord instead. Now the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates River and its waters are dried up. So the Euphrates River is um, northeast of Israel and it's going across Jordan um, and for any great army to come from Russia kind of area or China or from Iran, Iraq area, they'd have to cross the Euphrates but look what happened. So the water's dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Okay, and this is an enormous army. And then I saw three unclean spirits that look like frogs. And these unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon. Okay, out of, from Satan they're coming, these unclean spirits. And they come out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And these spirits are demons, are demonic unclean spirits. And they're performing signs. Okay, miraculous. And it's interesting that they say it looks like frogs. So John is seeing something like frogs, okay? If you look at what the world always sees as alien greys, right? Aliens from other planets, whatever they say. They've got these big frog-like bulbous eyes. They're lizard-like, like scaly-like frogs. Big heads like frogs and, you know, these kind of flat noses and big eyes. So... If he saw something like that, he'd be like, it's like a, a demon frog. It's an unclean demon like a frog. He's trying to describe this. I think this could be very much something to do with. And we we know that these these things, what people see, they are not aliens from other planets. They are what it says. They're, they're demons. They're unclean spirits. They're demonic, fallen angels or something like that. And Satan's their, their king. Um, so I think this is certainly something that could be something well to do with... Uh, deception of you know alien disclosure deception coming from um <coughs> from <coughs> sorry fallen angels from ufos from demons from aliens that sort of thing but that's what they do they come and deceive they perform signs they do false miracles and they gather everyone to fight so they tell lies about probably about god probably about israel about Jesus, and they say, you know, the, he's the enemy, we're your real creators, you know, you've got an enemy up there, and we're for you, and like the same thing they've always said, we'll give you secrets, we'll give you magic, we'll give you weapons, we'll give you maths and science and medicine and all these things, we love you, we're the good guys, God is the bad guy, you've got to fight him, and that's what happens, they, they're spirits of demons, they form signs, they go out to the kings of the earth, and, and the whole world, and they gather everybody to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, so they're deceiving the whole world for the last big fight. This is like the World War Three. Everybody piles in to try and attack Jerusalem. And then that's when the whistle is blown. God comes down, destroys them, as we'll see in a minute. And now Jesus comes in here. I don't know how this fits and why and where, but there's suddenly Jesus says, look, I am coming like a thief. You're blessed if you watch and you keep your garments on, your white garments, the righteous deeds of the saints, lest you walk naked and your shame is exposed. So I'm not sure why that is placed there. 
I'm not sure if that was, I don't know, I don't know why, because it's right in the middle of, and then it goes straight back into talking about the Battle of Armageddon again. It's so. a bit random, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not really sure. But I always read it, because like, <coughs> if, if you put yourself in John's shoes, he's having this vision, and, or dream, or, or wherever he is, and he's like taking it all in, and he might be at that point getting a bit overwhelmed, and Jesus might be reminding him to look, watch, because you want to avoid these things. Yeah, keep it could, your garments on because I'm coming. Absolutely, and then yeah. He continues on with the. Uh, exactly. Movie. This isn't written as a story. This is yeah. a vision that's been yeah, yeah. that's been written down, and you know, if people who've had visions, you know what they're like. They're not always just like start, middle, end meaning ah oh, lovely it's like you see something and then it's this and then you hear something and you're like, oh what's that and then you see something else and you're just like <laughs> just write it down and then the wisdom interpretation is then given yeah. given by god so i always looked at that as jesus interrupting the vision there to remind him of the yeah it could well be so mm. all these demonic frog lizard demon things deceive everybody gather them together to the day of the great battle the day of god they gather them together to the place which in Hebrew is called Armageddon, okay? And that is the Valley of Megiddo, and it is in the east of Jerusalem. Um, and that is where this, this massive, the plain of Megiddo, it's a big desert open area, and that's when this is going to go down. The seventh angel now, this is the seventh and final bowl of wrath. He poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice comes out of the temple of heaven and from the throne and says, it is done. And there was... Noise and thundering and lightning and a great earthquake. And now this is the biggest earthquake ever. Such a mighty and great earthquake as had never occurred since men were on the earth. The great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nation fell. Babylon the Great was remembered before God to give to her the cup of the, of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So we'll see now what God does to Babylon. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Great hail, and that's another thing from um, Egypt with Moses. Great hail, about the weight of a hundred pounds, oh, which, like, a <clears throat> hundred pounds um, is about 45 kilos, something like that. Oh, what's that? So a 45 kilo, that's probably about Renee's sort of weight. So if you imagine hailstones of that size just smashing down. Um, yeah. Is falling from heaven upon man. And men blaspheme God again because of the plague of the hail. That plague was so severe. So you've probably got all these, you know, these demon, frog, alien things um, blaming God for this. And saying, oh, he's, look how wicked he is. We've got to fight against him. We've got to kill him. And we've got to destroy Jesus or something like that. Whatever lies they're going to tell. Um, rather than saying to the people, this is because of your sins. You need to, you need to repent. Um, but they don't repent. They just curse God and blame him. And they won't humble themselves. So, now this is now a cutaway of that vision when we were talking about Babylon and now the angels say to John with the seven bowls right I'm going to show you now what happens to, to mystery Babylon and to the great whore that rides upon it so the great whore that rides upon it is very likely to be the Roman Catholic Church um, for reasons that we'll see in a minute to do with the colours and the gold cups and the cardinals of the scarlet and the purple and these sorts of things so now one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of wrath came and talked with me and he said, Hey, come, I'm going to show you the judgment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her sexual morality. Okay. So. Why does it keep referring to Babylon? Uh, it's because it's, it's using this term um, prostitute and whore and stuff because it, that represents spiritual adultery. Um, it always uses that in the Bible. God likens when people go away from him um, and worship other gods so that we'd understand what that's like for him. He compares that to an adulterous woman, a wife, okay. who cheats on you. Yeah, and how much that hurts. Because he always says that we're his bride. Yeah. And Israel was meant to be his bride. But it says that they cheated on him, so he divorced them because they kept just playing the whore with other gods, which meant that they're worshipping other gods. 
you know, there are other gods, they're time and do you know what I mean? And like being intimate you can see with see how serious that is then to God, can't you? Yeah, it's yeah. the worst yeah. thing. So her like giving herself away kind of thing. Uh which her are you on about there? The wine of her sexual morality, yeah. So the her here is this great prostitute. It's, it's actually a nation. It's a kingdom, a country. Um, it's not a woman in this. It's She's spiritually symbolised by a woman, but we see in a minute it's talking about this this nation, this adulterous nation um, who's full of drunkenness and sexual morality and other sins. And God's saying like it's like this great prostitute who just dabbles with every religion and every, again, why it's similar to America. Um, and the Catholic Church is like this, because gosh, the Catholic Church is so full of sexual morality and adultery. Like famously, they're like sexual abusing, they cover yeah, it up, yeah, like yeah. spotlight yeah. and stuff, and all the uh, the altar boys and that sort of thing. It's yeah. horrific, it doesn't bear talking about. Um, and all the idolatry they do, <clears throat> worshiping Mary and everything. It's But, but in the name of God, um, the way God will see that is this just horrific prostitute who just corrupts the whole world. It corrupts his name and run everybody, and the whole world thinks that that's that's what God is. Catholicism, you know. Yeah, they do. They yeah, think the they think the Pope. Yeah. yeah, they think the Pope is the Holy Father, and he represents the faith, and it's just um, it's absolutely crazy. horrific in in God's eyes. It's crazy when you know that, and then you look at the Pope. Yeah, it's just bonkers, isn't it? Like, yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing to do with God at all. <laughs> yeah. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Okay, so you've got the two. You've got the whore now and the beast. And the whore is riding on the beast. Okay. And the beast is full of blasphemous names. So the beast has got seven heads and ten horns. Right. And we know this is the same beast now as before. The one with seven heads and ten horns, which are ten kings, etc. So this is the beast. The woman was arrayed, arrayed in purple and scarlet, right? Those are the colours. Maybe I should go to that picture. Um, yeah. Um, I'll send it in the group after. I think I've showed Isaac this. I know I've showed you guys. Um, the colour of the cardinals is scarlet. The colour of the bishop. The Roman Catholic cardinal is all in scarlet, yeah? And the colour of the bishop is all purple. And now it says adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls. And they've got all that stuff on. And in their hand, they've got a golden cup. So they've got these golden cups with gems on and pearls. And they always use that and hold it up. And they've got all their gold chains and their gold mitres and their pearl things and all that. And when you see the images with this scripture, it's like, yeah, wow, that's just yeah, perfect. Yeah, next time you see the Pope, you're going to think, you know, you're, you're looking at it. Oh, I know. I've seen like. Oh, you've seen videos, videos yeah. haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. There's some very, very good stuff about this. Um, I'll, I'll send the pictures. Um, yeah. So, in the hand is a golden cup full of abominations and the filth of sexual morality. So it's this whole, you know, idolatry that they do is abominable to God. This all this ornamentation, all fancy robes and gold and pearls and silver and there. Yeah, it's yeah, just like. like I was like, this is false, dead, what is this? this don't, don't do this in my name. So on her forehead, her name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. So that's God's view on that. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So, Sorry, hey, is this the Mystery Babylon? Then? This is Mystery Babylon, okay. yeah. So this is the city, what we see afterwards, what happens to the city, that what happens to Babylon, the city. So, um, the drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs, again, the Roman Catholic Church has murdered millions of Christians during the Inquisition um, under the Jesuits. They had this whole, like, military sect of Jesuit Jesuits, um, whose job it was to travel the world and anybody who wouldn't, like, Anyone who was Protestant, basically, they, they slaughtered in that in this country a few hundred years ago under the hands of Bloody Mary. They were they were killing uh, people who were standing on the Bible, basically. Who wouldn't anyone who wouldn't submit to the Pope and to Rome was was murdered. So immense amount of blood in the ha on the hands of the Roman Catholic Church. 
So when I saw her, I marvelled greatly. So John obviously doesn't is is looking forward. The Roman Catholic Church doesn't even exist. He can't even believe that what that Jesus' church would get corrupted so immensely. Um, and it didn't happen for about 400 years or so afterwards. When I saw her, I marvelled greatly. And then the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and the ten horns. The beast which you saw was and is not, sorry, which you saw was and is not, and is to ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to destruction. So we know this is the beast. Because remember the beast came out of the bottomless pit. It's the, and then we saw the beast coming out of the sea. And it's the same beast. Because we know it's got seven heads, ten horns. We know we're talking about that, the beast government. okay? Um, and we know the was and is not. Is that we know that he has a mortal head wound. And he dies and he comes back again. And the whole world worship him because of that. So we can see that. This vision is linked to that, and it's related to the same person. Yes, Sam? Just linked when I read that now. Could it be the Roman Empire? If the was and is not, and then is to come. Yeah, so the likely, the, the beast kingdom yeah. will be like a... Rev it's be, be what, what they've been trying to do, yeah. The revived Holy Roman Empire that Hitler was trying to do. The Third Reich, which means the Third Roman Empire. A unified Europe. Mm. Um, and that's the same sort of thing they're trying to do. One currency, one king. One Europe, that's all. That's, that's been, you know, that's been the the drive since the first Roman Empire under Nero. You know, Nero was in charge of all Europe, etc. So it's likely to be the same sort of thing. And Catholics are linked with the Roman Catholics. Yeah, and they were always heavily in bed. You know, and when the Roman Empire, the first beast of that time, fell apart, it turned then into the Holy Roman Empire, which was just Catholicism headed in Rome, and was still going. For centuries after the Roman Empire fell apart, we had the Holy Roman Empire, even in the time of Luther, you know, and that's when the big split away happened under the Reformation. They wanted to split from Rome and have their own independent churches. Um, so, yeah, and we're still around today. That, that That's the kingdom of, the final kingdom in Daniel's vision of iron mixed with clay. It's like a bit of the old left, but with other nations, it never quite really works because you've got this funny mix still. Um, but it will be again for a time, it says for a short time. So, those who dwell on the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and is to come. So, we see that, it's an important truth. So, um, anyone whose name is not written in the book of life. When did our names get written in the book of life, look? From the foundation of the world. Okay. And anyone whose name is not written in the book of life, that was written in there since the world was created, will worship the beast. They'll be amazed. They're going to be hook, line, and sinker. They're going to take the mark. They're going to believe in Satan and they're going to they're gonna worship him, take the mark. So, yeah, praise God. Um, yeah, I don't know what like. I, just, I don't know how people who don't accept, who refuse to accept the biblical truths about God's election of salvation and his choosing and things like the book of life and predestination and all that, um, what they, I don't know, I just guess they skip these things or don't read them or try and twist them, but it's just, if you read these things, it's just inescapably clear. Um, our names are written in the book of life from when God creates the world, it's as simple as that. And anyone who's not written is um, marvels when they see the beast, which means no salvation for you. Go to the lake of fire. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Okay, so, so now this is the woman now. So the seven heads and seven horns of the beast are, the, sorry, the ten horns of the beast are ten kings. The seven heads of the woman um, are seven mountains. So classically, this is thought to be the seven hills of Rome. And now I saw something on that documentary that we bought the other day, watching that. Washington, D.C. was also built on seven hills. I need to look into that and verify that, but I imagine they would have done that. They're not just going to make stuff up. So they believe that the woman, 
riding the beast is Washington DC. Is this Hillary Clinton? I don't know if it'd actually be Hillary, but in terms of a nation, this, if it's in terms of a country, Washington DC would fit this bill quite well as well because they certainly export sorcery and abomination and all these sorts of things and are very rich and wicked. Um, so it could be the Roman Catholic Church, could also be Washington DC. Um, it's quite interesting, but these things will become very clear to us as time goes on. But there are seven hills in Rome, I know that for sure. Uh, Rome is built on seven mountains. So they are also seven kings. Five have fallen, so these are the previous kingdoms that are described in Daniel's visions. One is, and the other one has not yet come. So this is that future kingdom to come, the Antichrist kingdom. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. Concerning the beast who was and is not, he is the eighth, and he is of the seven and goes to destruction. So this is that same thing. He's here a little while, then he dies, okay, and then he's not, and then he comes back again. And he goes to destruction. He ends up in the lake of fire. And so the beast. So that's what they're saying there. He's there a little while. He was, and then he's not, and then he is again. He's the eighth king and the seventh king. Okay, that's what it says. He's of the seventh. So he's the seventh one, and he's the eighth. He comes back. When he comes back, he's different. He's now fully possessed by Satan, and he's the false messiah, and everyone worships him. The ten horns which you saw. So these are the ten horns. On the seven-headed beast coming out of the sea, there are the ten horns on the beast that the, the woman is riding at the beginning of this chapter. Those ten horns are ten kings who have not received a kingdom yet, but they will receive authority as kings for one hour with the beast. Okay, so these ten kings are going to be ten presidents or ten literal kings or ten countries. Um, it could be the, you know, the, what they call the G10 or something like that. Um, could be the 10 lead countries of Europe, could be obviously UK, Germany, Spain, France, Italy, um, etc. Giving power to this UN leader, this EU leader, this one king saying, right, we're all going to band in together. We're going to create this one world, this new superpower. Uh, and that's what will start then. He will then become this world leader because um, they all give their authority to him. They are all, they are of one mind. And they will give their power and their authority to the beast. So they're going to be fully on board with this guy. They will wage war with the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. Also, in, um, I made an article on this the other day. In Timothy, it says that the Father God is Lord of lords and king of kings. So we can see another little scripture there about obviously Jesus being God. Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. God is Lord of Lord and King of Kings as well. Um, so Jesus will win. So they they war against him as we see the Battle of Armageddon. They all get together. They try to fight against the Lord Jesus, but he comes and destroys them with a sword from his mouth. Those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See that? There you go. Those that are with Jesus are called and chosen faithful so yes indistinguish uh, indisputable facts we don't choose jesus we don't call him we don't make a decision for him we don't seek him there's no such thing as seekers the only ones who come to jesus are the ones that have been called and been chosen by him then he said to me the waters which you saw where the prostitute sits these are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues Okay, so this this beast and this prostitute on the beast influence and affect lots of countries and, and lots of nations and lots of languages and everything. There is widespread. So that's true about the Catholic Church, and it's true about Washington D.C. in America and their policy and their culture. It's, all, it's worldwide spread. Catholic Church is everywhere. U.S. is everywhere. So these things fit together quite nicely. Um, so, you know, the Catholic Church is kind of like the false religion aspect of it, and the US is the, everything else, so the sexual morality and the drugs and the, and the materialistic culture and all of that stuff, and the money and worldliness. Yeah? It's so true, actually, because there's no other, there's no other religion that is as, ethnic, as uh, 
racially diverse in Catholicism. No, all widespread. Muslim is mainly Middle East. Mm -hmm. Catholicism is better everywhere, in yeah. every country of the world. <coughs> Major yeah. in Southeast Asia. All Major walks of life. Yeah. World. yeah. Uh, and same with America. There's there's not such an exported culture as, as America. Mm -hmm. You know, their TV alone is like everybody go go anywhere and talk about Friends. Everybody's seen Friends. You know, what I mean, they export their their culture far and wide. Um, these ten horns and the beast which you saw will hate the prostitute. Interesting that there's something happened, see? They have a falling out. So these ten kings and the beast which form this government, they end up hating the prostitute at the end, and they turn against her, and they make her desolate and naked, and they devour her flesh and burn her with fire. Because God has put it into their hearts to fulfil his will, and to be of one mind. And to give their kingdom to the beast and to the words of God fulfilled. So because we know that the beast, it says in um, Daniel, that he will um, he will exalt himself above everything that is God. It will say that he is God. So he's not got no interest in any other religious people or thing or system. So if it was the Catholic Church, he'll be on board with that while it's supporting his agenda. Then he'll go against that and destroy it and be like, no, there's no more Catholic Church, there's no more Muslim faith, there's no more anything. I'm God, I want all the worship, it's all about me. Um, he won't allow anything, anybody else to be interested in anything else. Yep, so that's probably what will happen there. Um, Right, the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So that sort of more makes me think that it is Washington D.C. Because um, Rome doesn't really rule over. <sighs> doesn't doesn't. It's really hard. Cause the Pope and the Roman Catholic Rome is still very influential in world affairs. A lot of presidents and kings and things do go to Rome, and they have audiences with the Pope, and they quite heed what he says. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not quite yeah. as much so as Washington, the president of the US. They, I would say he probably has more, but at the same time he go, goes to meet the Pope as well. So it's, the it's hard. Him, hmm? Or is it just he goes to the <laughs> I don't think the Pope leaves the Vatican. He doesn't oh, go and yeah. generally won't go and see. I don't think he's been to America. I don't think they have. It's more like they would go to the Pope. Um, but yeah. Who has more influence, the US via Washington or the Pope? Hard to say. The Pope has more um, followers. I don't know. Person by person, like basically 90% of the Philippines is Catholic. They're like one of the most heavily populated really? countries in the world, yeah. So then, and then you've got England, and you've got all of like Spain. Basically, Spain's all Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got the Catholics in America. Pope definitely has way more followers. So yeah, they they both fit the bill pretty well. Cause even the Philippines, the US has got very influential in the Philippines, isn't it? They're afraid of the states and they follow too about a lot of stuff, and they've got a navy there. So we will find out. But yeah, so it, it is a great city. It's a nation. It's not a woman. It's actually a great city. Something really important, and a city which is very much reigning over kings of the earth. Really important. So now look what happens to this great nation, Babylon the Great. Um, it makes me think it's America as well, because when you see what happens, if this was Rome, it was happening to Rome, this would affect, have an, a huge fallout and effect. And Rome is very small. You can't nuke the Vatican and wipe out half of Italy and the surrounding countries. Whereas this just happened. If it happened to America, America so far away, you could send a hundred nukes at America, it wouldn't affect anybody but America, affect Canada, but anyway. After this I saw another angel come from heaven, with great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out mightily with a loud voice saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. This is now the judgment, this is what happens. She has become a dwelling place of demons, and a haunt for every unclean spirit. So that is true of America. America is so full of the demons and the occult and unclean spirits and it's the home of false teachings where all the bad christian teachers and mega church stuff and prosperity gospel and the real heretical stuff is all coming out of out of america um the false teachers leading people astray they're all american yeah td jakes yeah. and osteen and um 
Rick Warren and all these people, Kenneth Copeland, they're Copeland, all Americans, well, yeah. Of, and they yeah. spread this stuff out and it hits everywhere oh, in the world, you know. Yeah. They're polluting people around the world. Mm. A haunt for every unclean spirit and a haunt for every unclean and hateful bird. All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her sexual immorality. Okay? So, it's, again, it's a nation in which it's exporting sexual immorality. Rome doesn't really do that. You know, they don't create porn. America does. It's like one of their biggest industries, like billions. Yeah? But could it be a cup of communion? members of the Catholic Church. Possibly. The Catholic religion is sexually immoral mm. because they commit things rather, you know, their priests are doing, you know, atrocious things. Mm -hmm. And every na in every nation there's a Catholic believer. So all nations would have drunk from the wine of the wrath of sexual immorality. But it's only really affecting Catholics, whereas this is something that is just spread to like the whole world. Um, yeah. And um, otherwise, like, because America is so influential, they're so they're so huge. It's the new, it's the new, meant to be the new Atlantis and all that, and the new world order is their whole thing, and they've been working on this for centuries, yeah. you know. And the Catholic and they, Church doesn't support the merchants of America. No, not particularly. It's not a trading place. America is everything is like going through there, and their whole stock market and all the everything's everyone's get gets wealthy from America. So, yeah, they fit the bill really well. I think Catholic Church involved, they're probably the whore riding on the beast, which is the states. Um, so, all the kings of the earth have committed adultery with her. They've all got involved. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. So, if you wanted to look at a, a country of abundant luxury, that's the states. Look how, just look how fat everybody is. Everything's big, you know. <laughs> super size, super size me. Super size your McDonald's. Super size yes, your people. True. Your big houses. Yeah. Your big cars. Big roads. Big scale, wasn't Everything's it? all about yeah. excess, isn't it? It's the whole the American dream. Mm. It's like that's what it's all about. That they caused the entire global recession in, in two thousand eight because they won't live within their means. Prime um, prime mortgages. People over borrowing. You know, negative in mortgages and one percent things like that. Deposits and just it caused the whole world to fall apart. Um, because the whole world's hinged on their economy. Um, so yeah, there's lots of reasons. So verse 4, and Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Get out, lest you partake in her sins, unless you receive her plagues. Because her sins have reached up to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her as she is rendered to you, and repay her double for her deeds, and the cup which she has mixed makes a double portion for her, to the extent that she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously, as we know is going on there. So give her torment and sorrow, because in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, and I am no widow, and I will see no sorrow. So, because of that attitude, look what happens, verse 8. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. Okay, and it gets more swift in a minute. You see how often it says one day and one hour. It says one hour about three times that the destruction comes in an hour. There's no destruction that can come in an hour this day and age, apart from, from, from nuclear attack, essentially. So death, mourning, famine, she'll be utterly burned with fire. So that, again, that sounds like nuclear bomb. What can destroy it with fire utterly in an hour? It is the Lord, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Okay. The kings of the earth who have committed adultery and live luxuriously with her, they are going to weep and mourn when they see the smoke of her burning. All right. That talks about ships in a minute standing off, seeing the smoke rising and they're crying. So if you picture like the east coast of New York with all the trade cities where all these massive tankers are piling every day, like the New York port, Manhattan Island, Long Island, these giant, you know, the super tank, super containers carrying all the stuff piling in. There's tens of thousands across the Atlantic all the time from all over the world. And they're getting there and they just see fire and smoke. And they're like, oh my gosh, what's happened? And they literally say, they said, what are we going to do with all our stuff? They say that in a minute. So they are standing off for the fear of the torment and they're saying, oh no, 
They can see the smoke of the burning. Alas, for that great city, the mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, look, in one hour your judgment has come. And they're terrified when they see the smoke. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their merchandise anymore. They're like, what would you do with that stuff? How are they going to sell it to? If this happened to Rome, it wouldn't really be an issue because there's plenty of places to sell your stuff. But if this happens to America, big problem. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, all kinds of scented wood, ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, marble, cinnamon, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, and slaves and souls of men. So this essentially represents all things, all expensive things this time. Sat, sat mud, all goods. Um, Interesting as well how it says about slaves and souls of men, because who was like the big thing about the slave trade and, and was built by slaves was America, obviously. They're like the big slaving industry, their whole, even now, like their basketball and stuff, they're like NFL, all these um, African-American like supermen that have been, there's a dark history of that where they were selectively breeding the strongest slaves and like killing off really? the weaker ones yeah they've been they've been breeding bigger stronger slaves for a long time because they wanted to work um and now that's so again fat white men can make tons of money off getting these bigger stronger slaves to play american football and basketball and make them tons of money yeah. in in um advertisement and stuff like that. yeah it's terrifying um and the whole of that country was built by the with the blood um and slavery of of poor um african people kidnapped from and sold usually by their own people sold off to america to build to make white people rich but yeah it's really sad but yeah it's interesting about saves and slaves and souls of men kind of fits the bill for the states as well so all this stuff um they're sad because they can't sell it the fruit that your soul lusted after has departed from you and all the things with which graceful and exquisite have departed from you and you shall never find them. So the merchants of these things who gained wealth from her will stand far off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, alas, that great city that was arrayed in fine linen in purple and scarlet, so wealthy clothes, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls in one hour, again, there's that term, one hour, such great riches came to nothing, didn't matter. So this I'm thinking, in modern day, if if Putin decides I'm going to launch fifty nukes, take out America, this is what this is what would happen in an hour if he decides to do it. And what would we do? I don't think people would retaliate if he just gets his subs out into the Atlantic and just suddenly surprise nukes this is America. God's wrath, like coming down on America. Like yeah, yeah. Was... God uses secular people. Oh, so is he? What I'm saying is, God's using the people to destroy his. Yeah. So I let's say Putin. So God, like, using Putin to yeah. kind of... Uh, Punish America. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he could attack on them. Yeah, yeah, he used who he wants. Right. Same with, even with his own people. When um, Israel were really disobedient and would not listen, they kept killing the prophets and God told them to repent, he was Nebuchadnezzar, who was a, an idol worshipper. So this isn't coming from the sky as such. This is kind of coming from God basically using other people. It sounds like it, yeah, yeah, in this instance to me, that this is... But there are things that do come from the sky, isn't there? there yeah. Are, yeah. This is separate to the bowls of wrath, though, isn't it? It this is, is yeah, this is a specific so, judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Bowls of wrath at the very end of Michael Graham. Ah, uh, right, okay. Right. This is like going back again now. Ah, uh, with you. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I got confused the first one, but I was like, yeah. oh, I know we've gone In back a minute, right. okay. a heavenly illustration is given of an angel throwing a thing, and, he, and then he says, this is what it's going to be like, which again sounds like nuclear destruction, which we'll see in a minute. So, yeah, these are these are like, this is the prophecy. These are the symbols. This is what's happening in heaven. And this is similar with what was warned of to um, Jerusalem when Babylon then came. It was all very prophetic language. And then God used Nebuchadnezzar to go and kill everybody, destroy the temple and take them into captivity, etc. Nebuchadnezzar didn't become a, belie a believer until like, I don't know, 10, 20 years afterwards. Time um, scale wise, could we be here during this then and witness this? Because it's before the rapture. Uh, yeah, witness this. I'd have to 
check. I can't remember where it sits. I need to get the timeline out and look where it sits in terms of the other things. Um, it's the rack, isn't it? It's in the rack. Mm, I think it's in the rack. I think it's in the rack. I'll have to check. So, and now you see all the sea captains, look, the seafaring men, these are these merchants, all the sailors and all those who trade by sea are standing far off. So they're in their ships and they're crying out when they see the smoke of the burning and saying, what city is like this great city? And they threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing. So they're like, what are we going to do with all this stuff we put on our ships? Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships in the sea grew rich from her wealth. That is not true for Rome at all, uh, but it is true for the US. Yes, yeah. yeah, in one hour she's been laid waste. Again, that term is probably the third time. In one hour, just utter destruction. <sighs> burning, burning, burning in an hour. What could happen to such a city for it to burn? If this, even any natural fire couldn't consume a city in an hour. It just doesn't happen. It takes it much longer than that. Great fire London was burning for, I don't know, months. So rejoice over her, O heaven, and saints and apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you against her. And this is what it's like. Then a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and throws it into the sea, saying, this is what the violence will be like. With such violence shall that great city be thrown down and should be found no more. It'll be like this, like a, like a sudden bam, like a flood. The sound of harpists and musicians it won't be a flood, obviously, because it says it's going to be fire. But it's just, the illustration is that it'll be boom, sudden, cataclysmic. The sound of harpists and musicians, flute, pay, flute players and trumpeteers. So we've got a lot of music, okay? America also exports music. Rome is not famous for music. They don't export music. America does. The whole rock music thing is like everyone in the world listens to American music. Harpists, musicians, flute players, trumpets shall not be heard in you anymore. No, no craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. Again, Rome is not really famous for craft. The sound of a millstone shall not be heard in, any, in, of you, in, the, eh, in you anymore. So I think that's about farming. America also produces billions of food. The light of a lamp shall shine in you no more. So that's about Christianity. And the voice of a bridegroom and the bride shall be heard, of, heard in you no more. So obviously there is evangelical Christianity in America. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride in the church. There's a presence, great presence in America. It's meant to be like a Christian nation. Um, but that will happen no more. No more light, no more Holy Spirit, no more church, no more bridegroom. For you, for your merchants, were the great men of the earth. That's true of America as well, not true of Rome. And all nations were deceived by your sorcery. So that's your pharmacia, your pharmaceuticals, your drugs. And that's true about America as well. Rome is not an exporter of pharmaceuticals or drugs or anything. America is the big thing. They make all the, even this whole thing about drug lifestyle, like, you know, oh, you know, rappers with joints and like, mm. it's cool to take, look at Breaking Bad, it's cool to take meth yeah. and cocaine, all that, all these recreational cool drugs, all that whole idea comes from American TV, movies, yeah. music, you know yeah, what I mean? That really whole thing, yeah. it, they export this thing, this idea that it's cool to take these drugs. Awesome as well. All of the female American pop stars are yours? witches. Witches, aren't they? And they're being like, and their music apparently like summons demons. Well, yeah, their the music Freemasonry is deceiving the world. Stuff. Like, every young person is totally deceived by the music of Beyonce mm. and stuff. Mm. That's so you know, even be sacrifices. We're all sacrifices going on in films that you watch. You know, when you watch a film, someone's been killed or whatever, you think, mm. why am I like, so real? I reckon some of this stuff could actually be real, like yeah, yeah. Watching, actually watching a sacrifice and you don't even realise You it. hear about snuff films, don't snuff you? Snuff films? Stuff, yeah. That's yeah. Stuff. It's like a normal yeah. film where, yeah, they will, someone will it's actually real. be killed and it's real. It's, yeah, footage of a murder sort of thing and they kind of play it off in a story, but yeah, it's sick. Mm. And then you've got Bohemian, Bohemian Grove, where all the um, kings of the earth meet in the Californian Redwoods mm. every year. With the presidents and the prime ministers yeah, and all that, and they do, yeah, they do sacrifices of virgins and stuff, and they burn stuff with this giant owl of God yeah, and all that owl. stuff. So yeah, yeah, so that's when you see a lot of owls being pushed in shops and having like owls everywhere. Yeah, that's yeah. the uh, unclean bird, um, the haunt of every unclean bird and unclean spirit. 
Yeah. So yeah, it fits the bill well. I know. So in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who were slain on the earth. So gosh, what's going to happen if it is America? It's going to be some serious warfare and bloodshed and it's getting that way now civil wars on the cards um countries mm. getting seriously divided a lot of internal hatred between party and the other they've been issuing guns to the irs that's right and seventy thousand was it recruiting 60, thousands of people 70, 70, IRS and they've got to be willing to use arms if people won't like submit yeah. to their like taxations and stuff and they're like, yeah they've been hiring people that are willing to kill someone basically yeah. or shoot if they won't go along with what's been going on, so. Uh, no, oh, sorry. Yeah. What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> start like that. I'm trying to test. Yeah, it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So, Rev so nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah we we'll do this one. But this is this is the marriage supper. Wonder if we shall we finish tonight. So we're on 19. And we've got four chapters left. What do you reckon? How's everyone feeling? Should we fly through? <laughs> right, so now we've got the wedding feast. So after these things, you've got you know, judgment, wrath upon the kingdom of the beast, Babylon's destroyed. Now it's time for Jesus to come down so after these things after he's seen all that i heard a great sound of many people in heaven right these are all the saints in the rapture of the church up in heaven and they're shouting hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the lord our god for true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with a sexual morality and he's avenged on her the blood of his servants okay so he's judged the the destructions happen of whoever the whore is the catholic church or whatever or dc and of Babylon the Great. Again, they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures from Revelation 2, worshiping God, they fall down and they worship God who sat on the throne and they said, Amen, Hallelujah. And now we've got the wedding feast that we've all been looking forward to. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, great and small. Then I heard something like the sound of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, and that's all of us now, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns, which means all-knowing, God knows everything. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Why? Because the marriage supper of the Lamb has come, Hallelujah, and his wife has made herself ready, that is his bride, that is the church is ready, and it was granted to her, she was allowed, to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. And what is that fine linen they've been talking about all the time? Fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Okay, so righteous deeds. So as we can see, wicked people who don't do righteous deeds, who live in iniquity, they're not going to the marriage supper. They're not going to be ready. They're not going to be the wise virgins. They're not going to be the watchful, profitable servants that go through the door when Jesus calls. They won't get in. They'll be left outside. So we want to have righteous deeds on our, these are our white linen robes. Then he said to me, write down, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I've heard people, so this guy who claimed to be a doctor of the Bible, saying that there's not really anything about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And people think that's the rapture and that there's not anything about it. But in our, in our pre-revelation study, we went through, I don't know, five or six big passages all about the marriage supper and the wedding feast and all of that. And Jesus talked about it in the yeah. Gospels multiple times. Loads of stuff about the marriage supper. Um, there's a lot more about the marriage supper than many other things that people hold to. Um, so yeah, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Okay, so it's like a, it's like an underline. The marriage, it's almost saying like, yes, the marriage supper is a real thing. This is true. You are blessed to, to get into the marriage supper. This is something to seek and want to be taken to heaven for the marriage supper. I fell at his feet to worship him. This is an important bit to remember. So this is an angel talking, okay? And John has fallen at his feet to worship him. But he said to him, Don't do that. See that you don't do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brothers who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. 
or the testimony of Jesus as the spirit of prophecy. This is what Jesus Christ would have said when people fell at his feet, okay? If he was not God, he would have said, don't do that, worship God. He never said that. He accepted worship from dozens of people. I've put all that together in a, in a document thing and I'll, sh I'll put it on the website and I'll share it in our group. But I know I've sent some of the scriptures to Renee recently, but yeah, it's not acceptable to worship anyone but God. And that entails bow going down to worship. So even if you met the queen or the king, don't kneel. If that means you get kicked out, fine. Do not kneel. Don't worship. Because kneeling is worship. You can say, you know, your, your majesty the king, may you live long and things like that and honour them, but you do not kneel to anyone but God or Jesus Christ. Yes. This is to the angel, yeah. And the angel said, what are you doing? Get up. Don't do that. This happened to Paul and uh, Barnabas when they were preaching the gospel and they healed and people were falling down and saying, oh, they're gods. And they were like, no, and they ripped their clothes and they're like, no, no, we're not. We're just men like you. Stand up. Don't worship us. We're just, it's all about Jesus. Sorry, I'm not having any idea. Yeah, sure. I'll take a quick pause there. What about not doing evil and bad? Uh, is life people take the mark of the beast to save his life if he wants to die? Yeah. If he survives the seven bowls of wrath, okay, he doesn't live in America, so he could potentially survive it. He could still be living during that thousand years. Yeah, maybe. Because there's nowhere that says but if he's taking the mark, receives the mark is suddenly annihilated. No, but if he's taking the mark, that's... There's no salvation, no, but no. he'll be definitely angry against Jesus, knowing that he's going to destroy destruction. But there's nowhere... I'm just checking. There, is there anywhere where it says everyone who takes the mark... Not yet. ...will be annihilated? Not yet. ...by a set thousand in time? If that makes sense. Because not... It didn't I don't think they got the thrown in the lake of fire. I think it comes up in a minute. I'm just trying to understand who's going to be there in regards to unbelievers. Do you know what I mean? Because the world hasn't been... But if everyone in the world was killed, it would be the same, wouldn't it? No, every, yeah, everybody hasn't died. There's still lots of people. And lots, those people are still having kids and whatnot and living longer than they were. So there's populations yeah, are really high. Yeah. They've just made it through. Yeah, they haven't taken the mark. For It might not be for the right reasons, i.e. because they're... A, standing on their faith with Jesus, it could yeah. be just, I am not bowing down to a dictator, so to speak. Possibly, yeah. You know? But yeah, but yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, all about the, the angel saying, if the beast is not the Oh, yeah. <laughs> that could be the indication of that that's when everyone is gone. Yeah. These might be children, children of the um, tribulation saints, the people that weren't immortalized he didn't go to heaven in the uh rapture. rapture didn't have the wedding feast but came to the lord in that time and now having Children. kids because it does talk about people having kids all through the millennial kingdom as well we won't um because once you go to heaven if you've been transformed you will jesus said you'll be like angels then you won't be having kids but the people on earth if they haven't gone to heaven if they just get resurrected they'll still be Which is the only reason why I wanted Isla. Yeah. I said because I want to have children and experience that. Yeah. Right, let's make sure we wrap up now then. Uh, oh, I think I'm still going again. Yeah, so they travelled the breadth of the earth. So they're coming from far away, okay, they're travelling from all across the earth to go to Jerusalem. And they surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But now, look, in the same way Jesus just spoke a word and destroyed them, now the Father from heaven is intervening. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Boom. No great fight. Same before. They just get destroyed. And that's it now. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet were. See past tense? Yes. They are gone now. The beast and the prof mm. prophet were there. They will be tormented and they will be tormented night and day forever and ever, okay? That's probably the devil. But forever and ever, if you look at the real Greek word of that, it doesn't mean like, yeah, I don't know. Because everything gets destroyed in a minute, and there's a new heaven, new earth, so it's got to include the lake of fire, because it's not in some magic place, because all the people get thrown into it. So it goes away, all form of things. So then I saw 
we've been through this before, I saw a great white throne, this is the Father now, and him who was seated on it. From his face the earth and the heavens fled away, and no more place was found for them. Okay, so the earth and the heavens are gone. And this is the second resurrection now, everybody who ever died. And I saw, not obviously not the ones in the first resurrection. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Books are opened. These are the books of everybody's lives, everything that's ever, every idle word, all the things you've done, all written down. Then another book which was opened, that is the book of life. And remember, when did the names get put in the book of life? From the foundation of the earth. So the dead are now judged according to their works as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in the sea. Death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Okay. And that's hell, Hades, by the way, death and Hades. So hell empties out and they get judged now by their works. And then death and Hades get thrown into the lake of fire. So there's no more death. This is the second death. So hell's thrown in, death's thrown in, that's destroyed, okay? Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Boom. All that's destroyed. And now... There is a new heaven and a new earth, praise God, for the first heaven and the first, first earth have passed away and there was no more sea. So I very much believe that would be the bottomless pit and the lake of fire and Satan and all the fallen angels and everything all gone. So there's no point for them anymore. This is a new start. I want to go forever and ever. I just want to be strong. It could mean the word is like end of age. Exactly, yeah, till end of ages. This is the end of this is the end of the world. It can mean eternity too though, but it also is used for end of the age for the yeah. end of eternity. Nothing really in our physical life is eternal at all. Eternal is now this starts here. All the things in this earth only for a set amount of time. Um so aeons, it means ages to the end of ages. This is true, this is the end of the age now. Uh, no more see. I saw I John saw the holy city now. So this is when, this is when heaven comes to earth. This is the real Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven from God, like a bride prepared for a husband. So that comes down. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, "Look, the tabernacle of God, being the temple of God, is now with men, and He will dwell with them. God's going to live with us on this earth. They shall be His people." God himself will be with them and be their God. God is now going to live on earth. He's no longer in heaven. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. Praise God. So look at that intimacy. God wiping our tears away. He lives with us. We're with him. There'll be no more death after this. Neither shall there be any more sorrow. So there'll be no more sadness. There'll be no more crying or pain. For the former things have passed away. So everything. I would say including yeah, hell, death, pain, crying, torment, sorrow, suffering, Satan, all these things, all gone now. He who was seated on the throne said, look, that's the Father speaking, I am making all things new, everything. No leftovers, none of the old stuff is there anymore. So lake of fire, hell, death, all that stuff is now gone. I'm making everything from scratch. I'm starting a new creation. That's what it's about, how it was supposed to be. But it needed to be this way for us to go through this and to learn, and to truly be tested and become purified. It's like angelic replacement. Then he said to me, Right, for these words are faithful and true. This is like this underline again. He wants us to realize, I am making all things new from scratch. New creation. Write this down. This is faithful and this is true what I am saying. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. And this is the Father still speaking now. So he says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega at the beginning and the end. Do you remember where you heard that before? Who said that? Amen. He said it twice. Jesus said twice, I am the Alpha and the Omega at the beginning and the end. So yeah, we can see that Jesus is God. Only God gets to claim that those titles, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. I will give of the spring, and also Jesus' words in red, so this is the Father speaking. I will give of the spring of water of life to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Mm. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, 
the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, that's pharmacias, drug users, the idolaters, and all liars shall have their portion in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. So that's before the new heavens and the earth. That's the fate. That's how they all end. Um, so notice how it says the unbelieving. So this is people who don't necessarily do these things. These might be, you know, religious people. They don't do abominations. They don't do sexual morality or idolatry or sorcery or lying, etc. But they simply don't believe. They're, they're false. They don't truly believe. Remember when Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? You know, they don't believe the gospel. They don't believe Jesus. They're still going to. That's faithlessness. They, unbelief. Unbelief is not something that is accepted by Christ. You know, like all the Pharisees, they were very religious and they probably weren't involved in these things. But Jesus says, if you don't believe in me, you're, the wrath of God is going to abide on you. This is the second death. Now we've got the new Jerusalem. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the last seven plagues came and said to me, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. So that's the church, but it's also the new, it's also heaven, the new city. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, her light like a most precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. So it's this beautiful heavenly city. This is what heaven, if you go to heaven, people describe this sort of thing as what it'd be looking like now. But this is going to come to earth. So it's got a great high wall. It's got 12 gates. There's like three on each side, I think. Um, uh, at, the, at the gates, there's 12 angels. And on the gates, there's the names of the 12 tribes of, of Israel written, the one for each gate. There's three gates on the east, three gates in the north, three gates in the south, three gates in the west. So it's a square. The wall of the city has got 12 foundations. And on them are written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Probably not Judas, so maybe it's Paul. Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, etc. He who taught with me had a golden rod to measure the city and its gates and walls. This is very, very huge. The city lies like a square, and its length is as long as its width. He measured the city with a rod, 1,400 miles. Okay, so This is a massive cube. It comes down on the earth. Again, if the earth was a ball, if the earth was a ball this would not fit on it. You know, if you try and put a big square on a ball, it doesn't sit. Yeah, you need a flat earth for this to fit. A 1,400-mile cube square has to sit on a flat plane. So its length and breadth and height are equal, so it's a massive cube. He then measured its wall 200 feet by the measurement of a man, that is of an angel. So very tall walls, very, very big city. The walls were built of jasper, and the city was pure gold as clear as glass. Isn't so it's beautiful, don't The you length think? of the UK from the south all the way up to Scotland is not it's even... 16 miles. Yeah, exactly. So this is... Double, over double the length of the UK. Square. Um, it's massive. Yeah. It's like the size of France or something, as a as a square coming down. Wow. Massive, massive, massive city. Mm. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all. It's so beautiful. The foundations have got all sorts of precious jewels. It's got a foundation of jasper. The second is sapphire. Then it's chalcedony. Then it's emerald. Then sardonyx. The sixth is sardius. Then it's chrysolite, then beryl, topaz, chryrophase, jacinth, and amethyst. So very beautiful. And the 12 gates that are around the city are made of pearl, solid pearl. Each of the gates, this is what the pearly gates we talked about. Each of the gates are made of a single pearl, and the streets of the city were pure gold, as transparent as glass. It's just absolutely incredible. <clears throat> and I saw no temple in the city. We don't need a temple anymore, because we've got God. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city has no need of sun or moon to shine in it, because the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. Don't need any sun or moon. The nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honour into it. Its gates shall never be 
shut up by day, for there shall be no night there. They shall bring into it the glory and the honour of the nations, and no unclean thing shall ever enter into it, nor shall anyone who commits abomination or falsehood, which is lying, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So, do, 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 do. five past nine. No, we can do it. Last chapter. We'll bang it out. We go one hour forty. Chapter twenty-two. Then he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, and it's flowing from the throne of God and from the Lamb. So this is why we don't need. Remember, it said there's no more sea. We don't need to see anymore that dead salt water. We've got pure water flowing from the throne of God. So there will be water, but it'll be all beautiful drinking water. And it flows from the throne of God in the middle of the street. And we've got on this river, on each side of it, we've got the tree of life, which bears 12 kinds of fruit, different fruit every month. Okay, wonderful fruit. And the leaves of this tree is for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse. Okay, nothing bad. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. They will see his face. God's name will be on our foreheads. There'll be no more night time. Look, night shall be no more. They don't need any lamp and they don't need the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Praise God. Coming of Christ. So that's that's it. That's the end of this scene of, of heaven on earth. Now, now it's back to sort of now. The angel said to me, these words are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must soon take place. Jesus says, look, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, I am he who saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant. This is angel speaking. He's fallen down the angel's feet again. I'm your servant and of your brothers the prophets and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. So did he do that in the vision when he did it in Phil Lapp? Is that what? Yeah. He's only done it like it's twice. twice again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't worship angels. Make sure you don't do it. If you ever get a, a visitation from an angel to give you something, don't fall down and worship. Try and stay mm. your feet. Probably be terrifying. I was about to say, I see you just said that. I know, time. yeah. More <laughs> believe it. Yeah, he's buckled. And don't just believe, <laughs> just because it's something amazing, don't believe what you hear. Test them first and say, you know, is Jesus the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God who's come in the flesh? Do you worship Jesus Christ? If they say anything else, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of here. Um, if they do worship Jesus and will glorify him, then, you know, it's, he's from the Lord. So, so, th so demons will never, like, lie to you and say, like, yes, I do. That's they won't be able to. Him. They won't exalt him, no. They won't say, yeah, yeah. They won't glorify Jesus and, and confirm scripture. They'll try and tell you something else about him. Like if Mark is like, do I just need to ask God, do you believe in Jesus? He's like, no, 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 don't just ask that. The <laughs> they believe in him. Believe yeah. Yeah, yeah, and tremble. <laughs> yeah. Will they say, <laughs> he's the awful. son of God who's come in the flesh, he's king of kings, he's lord of lords, will they worship him? I can imagine you, the sage will be there like... I got like, yeah. let me get a Bible in a minute. Can you answer these questions for me? Yeah. <laughs> I've got to make sure. <laughs> then he said to me, do not seal the words of this prophecy, this book. So when the angel came to Daniel, he said, you've got to seal these words up because this is for the last days and then it'll be re revealed. He says, don't seal the words of this prophecy, this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He was filthy, let him be filthy still. He was righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to give to each one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. See how last time we saw the Father on the throne saying that. Now Jesus is claiming the exact same thing, because Jesus is God. And he said, this is very important here. He says, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city. OK, so when we do his commandments, we have the right to the tree of life and eating from the tree of life. That's eternal life. That's how we get eternal life. OK, 
Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden to stop them eating from the tree of life so they couldn't live forever because they had the knowledge of good and evil now. So people say like, oh, I'm saved and stuff. Not yet. You don't have eternal life yet. You have to eat from the tree of life. You get eternal life. You only get to do that if you keep God's commandments. Outside the city are dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everybody who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. Look who it's for. It's for the churches. I am the root and I am the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let him who hears say, come. Let him who is thirsty come. Let him who desires take the water of life freely. I testify to everybody who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. This is very important. If anyone adds to these things, okay, so add into stuff in scripture, like the stuff that isn't there, God will add to him the plagues that are written into this book. So he's talking about you have to translate and copy this accurately. Don't make stuff up. And equally, if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, if anyone starts removing scripture, God will also take their name out of the book of life and out of his holy city. Um, which is really bad. So you get when you get Bible translators who just delete scriptures they don't fancy and start mucking about stuff and taking things out. Very, very, I don't know how they got rid of it. It'd be interesting. To I guess they, they don't fear God, they don't believe in him because you wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. And it'd be really interesting to listen in. What's that? To look at NIV, ESV, NEV, all of them. See if anyone's taken that and out. And see if Revelation is the same in all of them. Yeah. It might be the yeah, only book that one's ever touched because of the, yeah. Yeah. Because of the uh, warning. But I, I think that applies to the whole book being the Bible. Because it's right at the end. It's how the Bible ends. I think this is referring to the whole book. Anyone who takes out of the book of God. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Even so, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 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 And that's the Bible. <laughs> that's the Bible. Hello, Isaac. <laughs>